Well, here we are. We're really on the third part of learning about the heart. And right now, the other two previous heart sessions, I did have some terms, but I need to add some more terms now for us. Because when you're learning things at an introductory level, especially, you need to know the terminology and the definitions of those terms. So here we go. There's the word terms. And then I'm going to start. Here's a prefix. Cardio, which means heart. So any word that starts with cardio and ends with whatever is going to be referring to something about the heart. So let's get a couple examples here. Cardiology. Ology, you know, means the study of. This term literally means the study of the heart. Okay, what do we got? Cardiovascular system. This is a neat term. Cardio means the heart. Vascular, think of it as all the plumbing that's connected to the heart. The heart, you know, is a pump, pumps blood out to the whole body, and all that blood has to come back to the heart. And that's the cardiovascular system. Miles and miles of blood vessels in our companion animals. The heart is the pump, but then all that blood that gets pumped out of the heart has to come back, and so forth. So that's the cardiovascular system, which we will have a lesson on. Then we have myocardium. Maybe I'll put it here because it's got the cardio in it. Myocardium. Whenever you see myo, whether it's a prefix or not, it means muscle. So the myocardium, that is the muscle within the heart. And you know that's cardiac muscle, the only place in the body where you find that type of muscle. And we'll be talking about that. Then, let me just add this right here then. <laughs> We're making a line across. Myocytes. This is a general term meaning muscle cells. It doesn't mean heart muscle cells. It means all muscle cells, wherever they're found. And maybe just to refresh your memory from maybe some place in the past, there's three types of muscle. Cardiac muscle, which we're going to be talking about here. Skeletal muscle, which moves bones in the body, right? And we said the diaphragm was skeletal muscle. And then the third type of muscle is smooth muscle. That's like in the digestive tract and other tubular structures. Okay, back to some more terms. Well, the heart has what's called intrinsic pacemakers. These are, well, let's say it this way, pacemakers. That sets the beat, right? And intrinsic is a term that means within. So within the heart, there are these pacemakers. Now, there's, you might say, I thought there's only one. Well, there's actually more than one, but there's a primary one, which we're going to talk about. But if that one plays out, then there's like a backup system, which is pretty neat. So the heart has intrinsic pacemakers. Well, then probably what I should do is tell you the antonym of intrinsic. So if this means within, extrinsic means without coming from really the outside. <clears throat> and let me show you a term with that because it's related to the heart. The heart has some extrinsic innervation. What does that mean? We'll be drawing that shortly. There's some nerves that originate outside of the heart that can influence the heart. They're not absolutely necessary, but they can speed up the heart and slow it down. And maybe what I should do then is grab the two terms that mean speed up and slow down. Here they are. Tachycardia. I've got a plus behind it because tachycardia is a case where the heart beats faster than normal. Bradycardia is where the heart rate is beating slower than normal. And a lot of times, those two cases 
are caused by the extrinsic innervation. Innervation, talking about the nervous supply. Okay, what are we doing with some more terms? Let's do denervated. Well, lo and behold, denervated means that we're going to deprive something of a nervous supply. And lo and behold, during heart transplants, of course, one heart is given by the donor to be received by the recipient. But the nerves, the extrinsic nerves that are connected to the heart are cut during the heart transplant itself procedure. And therefore, you have a denervated heart. The heart that's transplanted into the recipient is called denervated. And it's deprived of its extrinsic nervous supply, but it's still going to beat because it has intrinsic pacemakers. Very interesting terminology and physiology and anatomy. Well, let me do two terms here, then antonyms. Hopefully you can tell that sometimes I like antonyms as well. Innervate. That means supplying a nervous system to a tissue. So when in the embryo, a lot of tissues are innervated by nerves. Denervate is to deprive an area of a nervous supply. So this is like a plus, giving it a nervous supply, a nervous input at least, and denervate is depriving a tissue. And the transplanted heart is a denervated heart. Well, now I'm going to pause the video and then draw a concept drawing of the heart. And then when I after it appears, I'll say, hey, maybe you want to pause, draw it, and then follow along with me. Okay. I made a quick drawing of the heart. You might want to pause and draw what I've got so you can keep up with me, but that's the beauty of these recorded videos. You can pause. You can go back. I'm assuming you can do it without being told. Anyway, I want to talk about some of these names here, and I just want to make sure we know that this chamber is the right atrium. This is the left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle. And of course, we know why we put the left side of the heart on the right side of the page. We're looking down at an animal in dorsal recumbency. Cranial is up here. Caudal is here. And on an animal that's laying on its back, dorsal recumbency, the left side of the animal is here. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the innervation of the heart, the uh, extrinsic innervation. We know, well, actually, no, I want to talk about the intrinsic pacemakers first. So here we are. Look at this black blob up here by the vena cava. Now, you should know these names, right? This is the vena cava. I didn't label it. Anyway, this blob here is actually the primary pacemaker of the heart. Now, remember, the heart doesn't need any extrinsic innervation to beat. It has an intrinsic pacemaker. It's called the sinoatrial node. I could put it there, but just for cleanness, I'm going to put it up here. The SA node. The SA node is right here, kind of like right in the atrium where the vena cava joins it. And then I want to show another pacemaker. This is really the secondary pacemaker, and it tends to be right in this region. If you see, I'm drawing very near the midline of the heart. And that's called the atrioventricular node. So I could put it right there for a second. It's that spot right there. I'm going to put it up here for cleanness. The atrioventricular valve. Sorry, my tongue's getting twisted. What ends up being, now remember, sinoatrial node is the primary pacemaker. It's going to set the pace. Okay? But if it becomes diseased or falters, then the atrial ventricular valve, or node, not valve, sorry, atrial ventricular node is the backup pacemaker. Okay, so now what I want to do, I'm going to move those down just a little further there, maybe get this one moved over. 
because now I want to show you the external nervous supply that comes into the heart from far away. And I'm going to draw this in blue. I'm going to draw a cable coming down and impinging upon. Now this cable is a nerve and I'm going to show how it's going to impinge upon the SA node. And then I guess I'm going to use the same color but let me uh, define this first one that I've got here. We're going to call that the sympathetic nervous system. And I've got a plus on there because this plus means that if it's activated and bringing action potentials down, then it's going to speed up the heart. How does that happen to us or our pets? It's called the fight or flight system. That's also another name for the sympathetic nervous system. It gets you ready to fight and it also gets you ready to run, flight. It doesn't matter. You need muscles, getting oxygen, you need a heart increased. Uh, it's your digestive tract quits working really because when you're fighting or flighting you don't really care about digesting that meal that you just ate. So when this gets activated, when action potentials come down, it speeds up the heart. And then that would be tachycardia, right, from the previous little discussion. Well, then let me draw another little line coming through. I'm going to use blue again. I don't want to get messed up with other colors. But there's another system that impinges upon the same region. It's a different cable, if you will, definitely different. And it's the parasympathetic nervous system. When that gets activated, and sends action potentials down and affects the SA node, this tends to slow down heart rate. And so that's bradycardia, right? There's always usually a balance between the two, but it ends up being the parasympathetic is always kind of adding a little break onto the heart, whereas the sympathetic nervous system tends to come on and off. <clears throat> if you get a bear in the woods chasing you, it's on. But as you're sitting here, as I'm sitting here, my sympathetic nervous system isn't really doing a whole lot. So the kicker is the parasympathetic is always on a little bit. And so it's all it's automatically having a little break, which means slowing down the heart. So if you could go into a living animal and cut this cable without cutting the sympathetic system. Okay, so you cut this. Heart rate would increase slightly automatically. Just cutting that, heart rate goes up a little bit. Now let's say a dog's got a 140 beats per minute and we come along and we cut that, it would go up some. I'm not exactly sure how much, maybe 150, I don't know, 155. We could ask a cardiologist. Anyway, the kicker is it's always got a little break on it. Now, so that's the, just to re refresh our memories, these two cables, these two nerves, are an example of the extrinsic innervation of the heart. And when that is cut, as in a heart transplant situation, then you end up with what's called the denervated heart. And I put it over here on the right side of the screen over by the left atrium, the denervated heart. So lo and behold, the heart rate would be a little higher in the recipient than it was in the donor because the donor had this cable intact, right? But during the transplant, both of these are cut. This one always has like a little break on it. This one doesn't have a big influence at rest. So then when you put this donated heart, the denervated heart, into a recipient, it would automatically beat a little faster than it had been beating in the donor. Very interesting. Now, the last thing I want to say about this is there are things called ectopic pacemakers. I've got it singular here. What are ectopic pacemakers? 
Well, let's look at the word ectopic first. Whenever you see this word, it means not in the usual place. And we know what the pacemaker is of the heart. It's a group of cells that set the beats per minute. So if you have an ectopic pacemaker, look in the heart. I might have some area up here, up in the right atrium, that all of a sudden a group says, hey, we're going to set the pace. Well, that's going to be a little abnormal. It's not in the right spot of the two known pacemakers. So right up here, if there's a group of cells that were setting the beat of the heart, you would call that an ectopic pacemaker. Thank you.